Hey guys, welcome to the next video on Jenkins tutorial for beginners. In this video, we will discuss about how we can create the slave nodes in Jenkins. And we will also see what is a master and slave node. So let's get started. So first of all, what is a master node? The master node is wherever your Jenkins is running. It's your master node. Now this uh, single Jenkins server, which is a master node, is not enough to meet certain requirements. For example, sometimes you might need several different environments to test your builds. This cannot be done on your master slave, for example. And for that, you may want to create a slave node. One other scenario can be if you want to build a larger or heavier project on your Jenkins job, then your Jenkins server cannot simply handle the entire load of that job. So in that scenario, you can also just create a dedicated slave node to run that heavy build on that node. So let's see how we can create a slave node on our Jenkins. So just go to the home page of Jenkins and we will go to the manage Jenkins section. And once this manage Jenkins section is open, you just need to search for the section which is called manage nodes. So I'm going to just click on this option which says manage node. And you can see there is a master node which is the Jenkins on which you are working on. This is already there. And we need to create, for example, a slave node. Now for this example, I will be using a SSH method. So for example, I have a extra machine here, which is also an Ubuntu machine. And let me log inside this machine. And I'm going to use this machine as a slave node. And I will connect to this slave node using my master node on SSH. So make sure that you have already installed OpenSSH server on your slave node so your master can connect to it on SSH. Now we are going to create a new node. So I'm going to just click on new node here and you can give any name to your node. So for example, I'm going to just write uh, Ubuntu underscore 16 Four because my Ubuntu version is 16.4 on the slave and underscore agent, for example. Okay, so this will be the name of your node, Ubuntu 16.4 underscore agent. And this will be a permanent agent. So I'm going to just uh, click on uh, this option and then click OK, which is going to create this node. And here in the configuration section of uh, this node, you just need to provide some information. So at the top, you have the name of your node. And next, you can give some description about this node, what it's going to do, for example. For example, it's going to build some Java job or Maven uh, builds or any other builds which it's going to execute. The third option is number of executors. So number of executor means number of parallel job which the slave can handle. So for now, we have a one job. We can just uh, enter two here, which means it will be able to handle two jobs at the same time. Now the next option here is remote root directory. So the remote root directory is the directory where you want to save all the Jenkins related file on your slave node. So I'm going to open my slave node and I'm inside my home folder here on the slave and let's create a directory which we are going to use in our master configuration. So I'm going to just write mkdir Jenkins on the slave node, right? So mkdir Jenkins and then I'm going to just uh, go to the Jenkins file using cd Jenkins and then I'm going to just write pwd and this is the location where I want to save all the files related to Jenkins. Okay, so this is on my slave this directory. I'm going to just copy this path and I'm going to just paste this path as a remote root directory. So all the Jenkins related files or build uh, information will be generated inside this directory on the slave node. Now next option here is a label. 
So let's click on this question mark and let's see what our label is. So label are used to group multiple agent into one logical group. So this is a de simple definition of a label. So for example, I'm going to create multiple uh, Ubuntu slaves. So I can give a label here Ubuntu. Okay. So whenever I will use this label Ubuntu, one of the Ubuntu node will be used to execute the Jenkins jobs. And here you can uh, see, for example, if you have multiple Windows agent and you have a job that must run on Windows, you can give this label on your Jenkins job configuration. And then one of the slave node, which have the label Windows, will handle that job. So labels are used to group multiple agent into one logical group. For Windows, for example, you can give Windows label, all of your Ubuntu uh, nodes, you can give Ubuntu label, or any other logical label, which you can use to group those kind of nodes. So in my case, I'm going to give this label Ubuntu here, and I'm going to just minimize uh, this uh, explanation. And the next section here is the usage. For now, I'm going to use uh, use this node as much as possible. There are uh, other option also. For example, this option which says only build job with label expression matching this node. So if you uh, use this one, then if your Jenkins configuration will have Ubuntu label, then only this node will be used to execute that job. So I'm going to just use use this node as much as possible. Now the next option here is launch method and there are a few options here. One is launch agent via execution of command on the master. We are going to use the next option which is launch slave agent via SSH. Okay, so I'm going to just use the second option which says launch slave agent via SSH. So just uh, select this option and then this is the host name. So host name we will just go to our slave machine and here we can uh, just give if config command and then press enter and here you will be able to see the host name which is the IP address of uh, the slave machine and I'm going to just uh, give this uh, host IP address here. Now in order to verify if SSH is working from your slave to your master you can open the command line on the master and then you can just write SSH and then the username to which you want to connect. So I want to connect, for example, this user, which is a code bind here. So I'm going to just write code bind at the rate, the IP address which you have copied from the slave, which is 192.168.1.4. And now you will be able to see this kind of message. I'm going to just say yes and then press enter which is going to ask for your slave's password. So this is the login password, which you use to log in to your slave machine, which is this machine. Okay, so this machine's password you need to give here. I'm going to give my slave machine's password. And now I'm logged in to my slave machine using SSH, okay? If this is working, then uh, this connection will also work. So just use the host IP address here. And in the credentials, right now we don't have any credentials here. So we will add some credentials. So just click on add option here and then click on Jenkins. And when you just click here in front of kind, there are a few options here. One is username with password, other is Docker option. And next is SSH username with private key. So you can uh, use any one of uh, these method and for now, we are going to just use the first method, which is username and password. So we will provide the username and the password. So username is code bind. This is the username of my slave machine. And then I'm going to give the password of my slave machine, which I use to log into the slave. And then I'm going to just click add here. And then I'm going to go to the credentials. You can see by default, none is selected here. You just need to select the new credentials which you have recently created. So I have created these credentials. I'm going to just choose the credentials which I have created. 
Now the next option here is host key validation strategy. So this is important. You just need to just select this option which says manually trusted key verification strategy. Okay, so just click on this option which says manually trusted key verification strategy in the option host key verification strategy and this step is important otherwise you will face the problem and the no next option here is require manual verification of initial connection just leave this unchecked this is also important you just need to leave this as unchecked now the next option here is the availability if you want to uh, see the advanced option you can just click on this option also for your launch method for example the port on which ssh is connected this can be different if you want and then the jvm options and java path and other options here if you want to set them you can set it from here now in the availability section you will be able to see three options i'm going to leave it as default which is keep this agent online as much as possible now the next section here is the node properties and here you can set the environment variables if you want on your slave node for example java home or um, maven home or any environment variable which you want you can set it from here on your slave and the next option here is the tool location and this tool location for example if you want to set the default git location of your slave here you can set it from here but i will leave both of them as default okay which is unchecked and then i'm going to just click on the save button and you will be able to see this uh, option and uh, it says uh, the agent is offline some a message will be uh, displayed here and when you click on the nodes option here you will see this new node is created but it's offline and you will be able to see this uh, big cross symbol in red which means your agent is still offline so to make it online you just need to click on this uh, slave agent which you have created and then click on the launch agent uh, button i'm going to just click on the launch agent button which is going to connect to my machine and you can see the authentication is successful here and i will scroll down a little and uh, it's uh, doing some work and it says agent successfully connected and online so at the end if you see this message which says agent successfully connected and online that means this agent is working fine and it's online so once again i'm going to click on this nodes option and now you will be able to see this uh, red cross is gone and this agent is now online now one important thing to note here is you need to have uh, java 8 or more installed on your slave machine so make sure that java version 8 or more is installed on your slave otherwise it will fail complaining about java version or something if you have the older version of java so once your uh, slave agent is online we are going to see how we can create a jenkins job and use this slave agent so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new jenkins job and i'm going to just say test slave one for example and this will be a freestyle project and i'm going to just say okay and this jenkins job is created for now i'm going to just leave everything as default i'm not going to give any description here but when you scroll down you just need to choose this option which says restrict where this project can be run so this is important you just need to choose this option in order to select the name of your slave agent okay so your slave agent name is ubuntu 164 agent in my case this is the slave agent name and i can also see the label name okay so you can either give the label name of your slave agent or you can give the actual name of your slave agent i'm going to choose the second option here which is the slave agent name okay and then i will scroll down and for now i will just execute a simple shell command here on the slave agent and i'm going to just say echo and then i will just say this message is executed on slave node 
So I will just execute this message in my Jenkins build and I'm going to save this. And for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my slave and I'm going to just go to the Jenkins location, which is this location, which I have set where all the files related to Jenkins uh, are saved. And you can see slave.jar is already uh, saved here when we have tried to connect to this slave, right? And there is a JDK directory also. So now when I just build this uh, job, so now my job is building and I'm going to go and see the console log here and you can see everything is successful and this uh, build was successful. And now once again, I'm going to go to my slave and do LS once again. And you can see workspace directory is created when I have executed this build here and inside the workspace, there will be my uh, job name, which is test slave one. You can see the name of my Jenkins job is test slave one. And on my slave node inside the Jenkins dir directory, which I've given inside the workspace, this uh, job name is also created there. So that means everything is working fine. And this job is executed on the slave machine and not on my master machine, which is where my Jenkins is actually running, right? So everything is executed on the slave machine now. So this is how you can create a slave node using Jenkins and you can connect to the slave node in Jenkins. In the next video, I'm going to show you some more options related to the slave nodes and master nodes. So stay tuned and please rate, comment, and subscribe and bye for now.